Hi, good morning, everyone. The young people are going to start our worship today, uh, and we're going to sing One Way Jesus.
Chavillón. Thank you. The young people can sit down and the vintage group can come and get in place. And we'll be having the notices. Yeah, I'm just doing this while it all goes on behind me and gets organised and sorted. So, uh, as Linda said, welcome to the mission this morning for our service. And the notices are on, for the week are on the screen behind me and also for my benefit in front of me. So, we've got a pillow talk tomorrow at 2 o'clock, uh, prayer time at 7 o'clock tomorrow night. Um, on Tuesday morning, prayer together at 10.30. Alpha continues at 6.30 on Wednesday. Now, it's not too late to join in. Um, if you've got someone you want to bring along or someone who didn't quite make it last week and needs to get involved, then you're very welcome to come this Wednesday. It might get a bit more difficult to join in after week two, mm -hmm. but if you're free this Wednesday and want to be a part of it or bring someone, please do. Is that correct? Let us know. Oh, yeah, but please let us know that you're going to come or bring someone so they can make sure that catering works out. But that's Alpha on Wednesday, and it's not too late to join in. Young People's Worship Group on Thursday at 4.30. Now, this next item isn't available to everybody just to go along and turn up, but the LZ7 um, time uh, illuminates for the young people in the schools in the towns not that far away. And on Saturday, there is a training session for those who are involved in discipleship training for that. Now, you can't just turn up. You need to go with David Bracken's recommendation. Mm -hmm. And you need to book yourself in online. I think that's right, Tom, isn't it? You, you do need to. Yeah, honestly, you do. So if you feel that's something you want to be a part of and haven't done anything about it yet, have a word with David. Look at the news sheet. The process is there. Please get involved. And then we're back here next Sunday morning at 10.45. Uh, it's Exchange of Pulpits next Sunday. So um, David Bracken is going to Whitefriars. If he's a good boy, we'll let him come back afterwards. <laughs> and we uh, hopefully got the rector of St Mary's, uh, the Reverend Tom King, is coming to us. That's next Sunday. Um, I think that's everything. Just two upcoming things to mention. On the news sheet, you'll see there's a piece about a release, which is a men's conference on the 3rd of February. That's going on in, um, in Leicester. If you want to book into that or more information, please have a word with Dave McGrath. And our women's group, Sisters in Christ, begin to have their first meeting of the year uh, at Tandy's home a week on Saturday, not next Saturday, a week on Saturday for breakfast at 9.30. And I think that's everything I can say, other than Joe wanted a quick word, didn't you, Joe? Yeah. You can use your mic up there. Um, it's just a quick one. Um, as, part, as, as most people know, I'm still at college doing like a equivalent to like part of a uni degree in music. And a part of what I have to do this year is do this like research task and um, for, from next week I'll be bringing it like from next week to the end of the month I'll be bringing in questionnaires to, just as part of the research and it's kind of I it's more directed more for people over 18 because otherwise you got because it gets a bit more complicated with like getting parents consent for the children and it's just more about because the actual research task is more in like re social media and music, but I'm choosing it to do for like a Christian musician part point of view on it. So it's just from next week I'll be just bringing in some questionnaires for any anyone over like 18 to kind of just fill out as part of the research that I need to do. Thanks, Joe. And I'll be I'll be coming around for the offering during this service. Um, Please don't feel compelled with offering. It is a free will gift. And also, there are many in the church who actually give their offering directly into the bank, so don't put money into the bag as it comes round. So, uh, <coughs> but now's the opportunity of, of worshipping by, by giving. Thanks. Like we're going to sing, God, I look to you. I look to you, I won't be overwhelmed, give me vision, to see things like you do.
by you, Lord. We want to be used by you all of our days, Lord. Well, I think some days it's just you that's got to give us the strength. Pour out your spirit upon us, Lord. May we know your presence in our lives as we live. Amen. We're going to send the young people out to their, to their groups. So if you'd like to come down the, the front here. You're that young person, Marty. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure he ever was a young person. Um, so you just want to stay here? That's it, all crowded up in the, in the groove over here. That's it. Uh, some people say, this is the church of tomorrow. Sorry, you're here today. <laughs> you're our church today. So we've got to pray for you, okay? Lord, we just want to thank you for these young people. We ask you to bless them, Lord, to keep them safe. But also, Lord, place within them the power of your Holy Spirit, speaking to lives. And we certainly pray, Lord, for the teachers. They need it, Lord. Father, we just want to thank you now. and We ask you to bless them as they go. Amen. Amen. You can go.
you play? I'm, I'm, which song? Oh Lord, you search me. Yes, I'm going to start it. Oh Lord, you search me. You know my way. Even when I fail you, I know you love me. You're holy. You're holy.
I haven't a clue what we're doing next. <laughs> okay. <coughs> Over the mountains and the sea Your river runs for love for me And I will open up my heart And let the healer set me free I'm happy to be in the truth And I will daily lift my hands For I will Your river runs with love for me And I will open up my heart And let the healer set me free I'm happy to be in the truth And I will daily live my hand For I will always sing of when your love is Just the ladies I can sing of your love forever. I can sing of your love. Forever. Oh, I feel like dancing. Oh, I feel like dancing. My feet are ready, Lord. It's foolishness, I know. But when the world Your river runs for love for me And I will open up my heart And let the healer say I'm happy to be in the truth And I will daily live my hands For I will always sing of when your love came down yeah. I can sing of your love forever I can sing of your love David is now going to come and just open up the word to us. So as he walks up here, you can sit down. I'm going to pray for him. Lord, just ask you to bless David as he comes and opens up the word to us, Lord. We might feel your Holy Spirit moving us, Lord, and you have a different word. I don't know how you do it, Lord. You have a different word for each one of us as it's preached out because of the movement of your spirit, Lord. Thank you so much. Bless David, Lord. Bless his socks off as he comes to preach and open the word to us. Amen. Well, I've got 50 minutes. Is that loud enough, by the way? I can't. Uh, you hear me okay? Yeah. yeah. If, if, you, if you said no, you wouldn't have heard me, would you? So, um, I've got 50 minutes, so I'm not going to use all that to uh, bring the word, as Bill says. So let's spend some time in prayer. Let's pray for ourselves, our area, and our world. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the privilege of being in your presence this morning. We thank you that you know each one of us so well. You know our background, our situation, you know what we're an anxious about this morning, you know what we're worried about, you know what we're looking forward to, 
you know each of us so completely and father we thank you because that honesty relationship takes away so much of the pressure that we put into our lives in other aspects thank you that you care so much thank you know us so well father we thank you that you're also so almighty so great so powerful everything we see everything in the night sky is of your creation and father we just thank you we thank you that you are so great and yet so personal and so intimate that you also care about the fine detail about us and lord we just say thank you to the, you this morning father we're conscious um, that we've done stuff in the last week that looking back on it we really wish we hadn't done things that we've said that we really shouldn't have said things we've done that we really shouldn't have done things we've thought about that we really shouldn't have thought about we know too that there are things that we should have done and didn't things that we should have said and didn't say things that we should have thought through and didn't father for the times in which we've let you and others around us down we just now say we're sorry and ask your forgiveness into our lives and our situation we just pray that our relationship with you is made pure and clear and open as it should be and father we just ask for reminders from you in the future when we do go down these paths not to go down them and not to do those things again father we pray for us ourselves as church pray for those who sit in front of us and behind us around us perhaps some we've known for all of our lives some perhaps no, known for long at all but father thank you for each other and we lift each other before you this morning father we pray for those who are not here for whatever reason this morning we think particularly those who are sick and, and just can't be here and we lift them before you as we just come with that thought then individuals come to our mind and we pray for them and we lift them before you and their situation and circumstance pray for those who in years gone by would have been here but don't want to be here anymore uh, father we pray for them and we pray they'll return to you at some stage of their lives father we pray for our community those who live around this church those with whom we have an influence those who see our building those who maybe see us a couple of times a year and we visit homes in the area we pray for them we pray for their situations and father we lift them before you we pray for the businesses that are along the road in which we sit we pray for them too as they make decisions in difficult days and father we pray for our witnesses as Rushton mission church into this surrounding area and into these lives and father we pray that we may show show you to them in aspects of what we do pray for the events that we've got on in church this week we pray for pillow talk tomorrow and the ladies as they chat and just exchange views and pray your blessing upon them as they do that pray for our prayer times during the week that you'll just focus in the right us in the right areas of of how to pray of what to pray for and father we pray that you encourage us to come along and to pray and to be in that situation father pray for alpha on on wednesday pray for those who are coming along to it for the first times and exploring those who are here in, um, to refresh to hear things again those who are leading those who are supporting we pray for the whole concept and father we pray that lives will be changed and brought to you and brought closer to you as a result of, of what is happening we pray for our own people's worship group on thursday as they practice that you'll bless them encourage them teach them new things as they worship you as they come before you and father pray for our, um, our brass band as they practice too as they go out in the name of this church. <coughs> Thank you. And Father, we pray for next weekend as the churches of the town exchange their preachers. As David goes to Whitefriars, we pray for you, you to bless him there and them. And we pray for ourselves as um, 
as the Reverend Tom King comes here, that you'll also um, bless him as he is in our company and us as we just hear his word and enjoy his company too. And Father, we pray for our country and our world. In this area, we pray for ourselves as we face an upcoming by-election and all that involves. And potentially the, the media descending on this area, this town and on Wellingborough. We pray for our government. We pray for our opposition. We pray for wisdom into what is happening in, in those situations. And Father, we pray for our world. We've just been again hit this week by all that's the, the horror of what's going on in Palestine, on the West Bank, in Yemen, um, in the Red Sea. We just lift all of those particular new situations before you. And Father, we ask for solutions and, and resolution and understanding in those situations. But Father, we don't forget the ongoing war in, in Ukraine and we lift that before you too. It tends to get pushed down the news by other things. But Father, you don't stop caring and we don't stop praying. Again, we pray for resolution and understanding and peace. Father, we don't always know what the answers are. If we did, perhaps we could solve them. But Lord, we just lift these situations and problems before you and ask your blessing to be upon them. Father, thank you. Father, we pray for each other as we go out into the world in the coming week. We pray for the witness that we offer as individuals. And Father, we pray we may make a difference to situations we're in. That we may speak the right words, react in the correct way, and just give out the love which you show to us endlessly as we've been singing this morning. Father, thank you. And Father, we just, yeah, we thank you because you love each and every one of us and you've got a plan and a, a work for each and every one of us from the youngest to the oldest of us thank you amen so i wasn't expecting to be standing up here by um by 10 past 10, 11 so i thought that was a, good, a appropriate thing to do just come and to pray and often in all that goes on in our morning services we don't always get time to fit everything in there's so much goes on so just good to pray and bring those things to God so I'll bring your reading it's from Romans 8 28 to 39 words that I often read words that I often go back to myself and words that so often speak to me Romans 8 um, 28 to 39 And we know that for those who love God, all things work together, together for good. For those who are called according to his purpose. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, in order that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. And those he predestined, he also called. And those he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us. How would he not also with him graciously give us all things? What shall we bring? Who shall bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? Jesus Christ is the one who died. More than that was raised who is at the right hand of God, who indeed is interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or sword, or nakedness, or danger, or sword? As it's written, for your sake we're being killed all the day long. We're regarded as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I'm sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. 
Amen. It's all you can say to that. Some weeks ago, David Bracken explained to us, or to me, the concept of these first few weeks of 2024. A series, not particularly a verse or theme other than the phrase, New Beginnings. And those of us who are bringing the word for the next few weeks have to speak around those two words. And it's amazing how often I've heard those words in the opening weeks of 2024 in so many contexts. Some obvious, some not so. And even in last Sunday evening's Call the Midwife, New Beginnings was used as a phrase. And as I thought this, that, that thought through, a number of things have come to mind. And I'm gonna, they're going to feature in the next 20 minutes or so. Those of us who come and bring the word do it in different ways and actually prepare in very different ways. And for me, often, if I've got a theme early enough, it just goes in the back of the mind and just percolates for weeks. And then eventually, hopefully, something comes out at the end. Sometimes it comes out easily. Sometimes it's more like hard work, but the percolation goes on and God gives us the words to share. When I was thinking about new beginnings, I'm going to just kick Bill's, oh no, not Bill's, is it? Kick that wire before I fall over it. Right. One of my thoughts when I thought about new beginnings was a 24 ounce steak. The ones that we used to be, oh, we still can get them from the old, re, old red lion at Wellham. I mean, I can't eat them anymore. I can't eat as much as I used to. I used to be able to polish off a 24 ounce steak, but not anymore. Why do I raise it? Because when I'm eating that steak, it always used to remind me of the, of the, of the song Amazing Grace. Because you start off on a 24 hour steak and you're halfway through it and you've got as much left as you probably get anywhere else anyway. And the words with no less days to sing God's praise than when we first began. Just that feeling of eternity. We'll come back to that song for more legitimate reasons later on. So let me tell you about the day I thought I was going to die. It was the 1st of October, 2001. It was a lovely, clear, warm and sunny day on Gozo. We travelled on the ferry from Malta and driven around a part of the island already before stopping for coffee in the seaside village of Masselform. Gozo is an island with the capital of Victoria in the centre and all the roads lead out from Victoria to the coastal villages a bit like the, the um, a bit like a cartwheel. I've always heard it said the only way to get from one seaside village to the next was to head back through Victoria and then go back out under the spoke of the wheel. Whilst in Massaphorn drinking our coffee I looked at my map my flat map, I must stress, and saw a road that led to the next coastal village, and I decided to go that way. Sandra said, are you sure? I said, yes, that's the way we're going. Not yet, David. <laughs> Someone else take it? No, not, that's not the way. Right. No, anyway, carry on. Carry on. <laughs> anyway. I took this road I decided to take and it started easily enough alongside the beautiful sea. Although an A, uh, sorry, a 4x4 four four coming away flashed at me. And that should have been a warning, but I ignored it. And then the road turned a corner heading inland and the gradient suddenly switched up to 45 degrees. And in my little one litre hire car, I was in third gear, I quickly managed to change down to second but it struggled to cope. You know what, it's that feeling when you're going uphill, you think, I ought to change down to first, but I daren't in case I stall it. And the road just wound up steeply and sharp bends of 90 degrees with more turns. Sandra said to me, the view behind you is amazing. <laughs> but I wasn't looking that way. I would just imagine this little car just flipping backwards over and rolling and going back down the hill. So I wanted to change first gear, I didn't do it. I didn't want to risk stalling. And if I did stall, 
I really wouldn't want to do a hill start from that particular position. <laughs> As you can see from the picture and the fact we're here today, we made it. Although on the last corner, the last nine degree corner, we met a rent a kill van coming the other way. <laughs> But at the top, the view was absolutely fantastic, and that is the view from the top. And the reason I know it was the 1st of October 2001 is because the photo tells me it is, that it was. So I climbed out the car, um, a sweaty wreck, you can imagine that. I don't think that particular car had air conditioning either, and took the obligatory photo of what we could see. There's one more picture there, David, of Sandra having a look at that view as well. I think it's probably a good job you can't see the look on her face as we got to the top. Although I say she just always talks about the lovely view and not the terror. There's a very old joke, isn't there? About a stranger in town getting lost. He stopped his car and asked for directions. And the local replies, well, I wouldn't start from here if I was you. <laughs> The old one's the best. At times like the healing goes though, and other awkward in my, in my life, the phrase, beam me up Scotty, comes to mind. Get me out of here. I suppose it predated I'm a celebrity, get me out of here. Beam me up Scotty came from the television programme Star Trek, which I didn't watch much of and wasn't a fan of. But it's a phrase that becomes a, a, a common phrase we use in our daily lives. It's what Captain Kirkwood report would say, or was reported to have said, at the end of episodes when he wants to get beamed out of the planet or the hostile situation back up to the Starship Enterprise <coughs> to get out of the situation he's in. But your useless fact of the day is actually Captain Kirk never said that in any episode. He used words similar to that and never said it. Equally, um, in... Um, Casablanca, they never said, play it again, Sam. Well, even though everyone thinks they did. Anyway, that's useless information. But we've all had those beam me up Scotty moments, haven't we? And the I wouldn't start from here moments too. I've many personal exp examples, but I'm stopping there and not telling you any more of my embarrassing stories. But there are many. And sadly, many of you know many of my embarrassing stories like putting a dimmer switch on a fridge. <laughs> you can ask me later. <laughs> but there have been times in my life when I've experienced the consequences of my poor choices and actions. In all aspects of life and relationships, some more damaging than others, some just plain embarrassing, but some when I felt I'd blown it, messed up. I remember one church meeting a while ago and something was said that I wished hadn't been said. And after the meeting, I was left wondering, how do I come back from that? Where's my credibility gone? Because of what had been said and what had happened. Another beam me up Scotty moment. And I can't start from there, I thought. But I did. In some of these moments, it can be easy to entertain a thought that I've blown it. That God can't use me that there's no way back. I think we all face these feelings when we fail, when we mess up. The Bible doesn't give us a page after page of perfect people through the Bible. God tells us stories of real people who we can look to when we mess up, to read their stories of failure and restoration. As I've read in Romans 8, 28, Paul says, we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good, for those who co are called according to his purpose. This should give us hope that no matter what we may have done, wherever we may have been, our journey with God isn't over. Through his grace, his forgiveness, if we repent, ask him for forgiveness and walk with him. God can and will use every experience we've been through, including the pain, to build us to the person he wants us to be. God never wastes a hurt. In my early days as a Christian, 
which was when I was 17, so it was a few years ago. Um, there was a, some kind of crusade going in the bush, and that, that wasn't how I came to become a Christian. It was my, my uh, conversion was different to that. But there was this guy giving talks. Um, I think it was a guy called Dick Reese, but I'm really not certain about his name. It was a long time ago. But I went to a series of, me, of talks he was giving. And in one, he referred about our normal, natural way of being these days, was walking away from God. And he just used the military approach to it and said, you have to halt, about turn, and forward march. And there are times in our lives that we have to do just that, even as, as, as Christians of some years, to halt, turn around, and forward march to get back on the right path and, and road. I want to look at a few of these honest stories in the Bible and just draw things from these honest stories. First one is King David. Now, just, a, just over a month ago, I spoke at length about my namesake, David. Um, it's on YouTube to see if you want to see it, and I won't go into as much detail about David as it did then. But there's no question that David is one of the Bible's more important figures easy to be inspired by his youthful willingness to fight Goliath, his amazing and honest psalms, his enduring patience and enduring patience under King Saul. Then we read he's guilty of breaking half of God's commandments. David coveted Uriah's wife Bathsheba. He committed adultery with her, effectively stealing of her from Uriah. He lied to him and eventually had him killed. That's five out of ten, which isn't bad going. When the prophet Nathan confronted David, David acknowledged that things he thought were secret were not secret. And he immediately repents, confessing his sin. And that's when David wrote Psalm 51. He is forgiven by God. His relationship is restored. There were consequences as a result of David's sin, but he was forgiven. I'm not suggesting that we've sinned to the degree that David did, but when we have sinned, we must recognise it and repent. God's forgiveness doesn't save us from the consequences of our conduct, or indeed others. If we've harmed others, maybe we need to say sorry to them too. And that's all a bit simplistic. I did go into a bit more detail last time on David and t because it can be very simplistic to say that's what you do. <coughs> but uh, If we've abandoned our simple behaviour and are willing to accept the consequences, then God will still use us. We read in the book of Acts about John, also known as Mark. John Mark's family was significant in the early church. When Peter was miraculously released from prison, he knew the believers would be gathered at that home. Due to his family's significance and the relationship with Barnabas, Paul and Barnabas chose Mark to take him with them to Antioch. From there, Paul and Barnabas are sent to Cyprus and took John Mark along with them as an assistant. But something happened. We're not told exactly what happened, and Acts, just as a matter of factly kind of way, says that John left them there and returned to Jerusalem. He went back home. I say we don't know why John Mark went home, but later events suggest that something went wrong. When Barnabas later suggests to Paul that John Mark goes on another mission, Paul refuses. And, they're also, and, the, and Acts 15, 39 to 40 says, and there arose a sharp disagreement so that they separated from each other. Barnabas took Mark with him and sailed away to Cyprus, but Paul chose Silas and departed, having been commanded by the brothers, commended, sorry, by the brothers to the grace of the Lord. Many years later, when, prison, when Paul was in prison awaiting trial, he wrote a letter to the church at Colossae. He tells them that John Mark is with him and he's been a great comfort. He also tells them that, that they are to welcome John Mark if he, is visit, if he visits. John Mark has been restored. 
We don't know what kicked off between John, Mark and Paul. But now he was a man who brought Paul comfort. At one time John, Mark seems to have caused division in the body. Now Paul is calling him a fellow worker. There is a way back from our mistakes. Whatever had gone on with Barnabas, Paul and Mark, John, it was faced up to, resolved and they moved on. Before Paul became the writer of, the, of most of the, a lot of the books of the New Testament, he was Saul of Tarsus, a terror to the early church. Not only was he present when Stephen, the first martyr, was killed, he gave his approval of the murder. Luke tells us that Saul made it his business to destroy the church, going door to door in Jerusalem looking for people who followed Jesus so that he could throw them into prison. As we know, he had an incredible encounter on the road to Damascus, and we know the rest of the story. Paul regretted his behaviour before quite literally seeing the light. In his letter to Timothy, he said, in 1 Timothy 1, 15-16, Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the foremost. But I received mercy for this reason, that in me, as the foremost, Jesus Christ might display his perfect patience as an example to those who we believe in him for eternal life. Having persecuted Christians as Saul did, it was a complete turnaround to then travel the known world, preaching and sharing the word of God. He needed the forgiveness of God and the forgiveness and trust of those around for a new start. How easily would we have found it to forgive and trust Paul after what he'd done? Peter was loud and impetuous. He joined James and John as some of the closest friends of Jesus. In fact, he was the disciple who gave it a go walking on water, and he was the first to call Jesus Christ and the Son of God. When Jesus predicted that Peter would deny him, Peter responded by saying, no way. And we know that story so well too, don't we? But it was the very night after Jesus is arrested that someone confronts Peter in the courtyard and accuses him of being a follower of Jesus. And just as Jesus predicted, Peter denies him three times. When Peter realises what he's done, he breaks down and weeps bitterly. Did Peter's act of denial exclude him from Jesus' plans? No. Peter is the first of the twelve that Jesus appears to. He restores Peter. And Peter goes on to become the leader of the disciples, preaching the first evangelical message after which more than 3,000 people were saved. I sort of remember once denying Jesus myself. It was, I hadn't been a Christian that long and I was at work and the, uh, my boss was the chairman of uh, Regiton Town Council as it, as it was then and he was preparing to do the annual church, um, the annual town service and he was doing one of the readings he just asked me how to pronounce a particular word in the Bible. But he said, uh, you're, you're a Christian, you, no, he said, you go to church, don't you? And I really sort of messed up and really regretted messing up at the time of not actually being bold and saying yes and, and speaking out. When we fail, when we mess up, God is always willing to wipe our tears, lift us back on our feet, and set us on our way. I remember the story of Jonah and the whale. When God spoke to Jonah, he commanded him to preach the need for repentance in the city of Nineveh, but he refused. Instead, he did the opposite. He ran away from God, or tried to, and set out directly on a ship directly in the opposite direction from Nineveh. It was there that God sent a violent storm to capitalise the ship capsized the ship but just before the sailors tossed Jonah overboard the seas went calm instead of drowning Jonah was swallowed by a whale while in the belly of the whale Jonah repented and begged God to save him and God listened Jonah of course then went on to spread God's message to the Ninevites they repented 
and they were saved. And there we have it. There are so many ways that we can mess up and let God down. We can deliberately sin as David did. There's nothing accidental about his actions. They were planned and premeditated. But he repented, God's restored, and God restored the relationship with him, even though David and others had to live with the consequences. We don't know for certain what happened with Mark John. He may have let the team down or chickened out. We don't know. We don't know whether he didn't do what God was calling him to do. But something certainly happened. But it was reversed, and he was able to serve Paul and God again. Paul himself had to turn from being an enemy of God to a servant of God, having to acknowledge that he had everything wrong in his, in his attitudes. He went from one extreme of opposing to repenting and spreading the word of God. Peter, in the heat of the moment, took the easy way out and denied his Lord, even though he'd been warned that he would do this. And Jonah didn't want to do what God told him to, he didn't want to go and preach the word to the people of Nineveh. He thought he knew best, knew better than God. God had to take him in hand. Jonah had to repent and do what God had told him to do in the first place. And what about us? Well, I've mentioned the word repent a lot this morning. And when we mess up, when we mess things, that's often where we begin. We've all lived the beam me up Scotty moments when we've made wrong calls or judgments, when we've blocked our own way forward. The resolution has to begin. We're facing up to our situation. Whether we're halfway up a steep hill in Gozo, having deliberately sinned like David, having dropped out of something like John Mark, gone in totally the wrong direction like Paul, having denied Jesus like Peter, or ignored the call of God like Jonah. And none of these places is a good place to start. But we can only start from where we are. We can't start from anywhere else. Whether we might say, I'll wait until this becomes a better place to start, but it won't. The place where we are will only change when we take the initiative and change it. If you're struggling halfway up a hill, in Gozo, the only place to resolve the issue is halfway up a hill in Gozo. With God, a new beginning is always possible when we truly repent. He's always willing to give us a new start, a new beginning. Just that verse from Romans 8, 28 again. We know that for those, those who love God, all things work together for good, for those who are called according to his purpose. This should give us hope that no matter what we've done or wherever we may have been, our journey with God isn't over. Through his grace, his forgiveness, if we repent, ask him for forgiveness and walk again with him. It's great to have new beginnings <coughs> at New Year, but it doesn't have to be at New Year. It could be any time that we go to God and have that new beginning beginning. Let's pray. Father, we prayed once already today. We know that you know each of our hearts, our situation and our circumstances. As David found, things that are hidden, that, as King David found, things that are hidden from man are not hidden from you. You see our hearts, our situations and our circumstances. Father, we just thank you that you never give up on us, that you always want to hold us in your arms to love us. You always want us to come to you as your children, as children, to just come to their father and be with him and share with him. Father, we just maybe think this morning of times when we have messed up, times when, when being me up Scotty has been the only phrase we can think of to use or get me out of here. And Father, times when we thought the place we are is just no place to start. Father, our prayer this morning is that as we think, as we 
meditate on those words that you bring things and situations to our mind that we can indeed have that new start with you right now if that's appropriate to put things right with you to say we're sorry for what we've got wrong but Lord to commit ourselves to you and to whatever it is you'd have your you whatever you would have us commit ourselves to in your service father thank you thank you that we share together as church thank you that we share to you as individual each one of us with you as our heavenly father father thank you for that thank you for that intimacy that completeness Thank you for this opportunity. Amen. I said we'd come back to Amazing Grace, which always reminds me of that 24-ounce steak. Going on forever, we've no less days to sing God's praise than when we first began. And as we sing Amazing Grace now, how about the first verse too? Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found, was blind, but now I see. Let's sing this together as our new beginning. having tea and coffee afterwards and a, if you're quick a biscuit um, uh, um, if you want to speak to somebody please come and speak uh, new beginnings aren't for tomorrow they're for today new beginnings amazing grace I'd like to stand and sing amazing grace how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Twas grace that taught.
time we can get a call to repent and to start again from exactly where we 